if like no some way if some question arise related to nutrition i can uh, like somehow supplement some of the knowledge so that way i'll be here so any yes. time in between the sessions yes. in between the session if uh, nutrition any related nutrition questions arise then i can help somehow that's wonderful thank that's you wonderful. so much for giving your time great to see you yeah thank you samir samir has been such a uh, inspiration for us and uh, we're so happy that we could come in contact with such a you know um, a person full of energy and full of um things for the local you know local food local yeah. people local tradition everything local yeah so it's good to have uh, again another person in you to be with us i think our participants are quite lucky and we look forward to interacting with you yeah. so and so, uh, our students yeah we're yeah. coming there 40 47 44 now yeah yeah slowly uh, they're coming for me today's today's lecture will be something challenging also because i have my biggest constructive critic near me <laughs> so so i'm also nervous yeah. <laughs> that's good so uh actually we are now uh, four minutes uh, already into the time so maybe we can yeah. start this summit or wait for a few minute, more minutes yeah so, uh, should you wait for some uh, other two, three minutes or we I start? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we can wait. Uh, just give another uh, four minutes and then we start. Okay. Okay. Is, it, is okay. that okay with you? Yeah, it's okay with you. Okay. Uh, I'm sure they're joining because now, yeah, the numbers are increasing one by one. They're just joining, I guess, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, Samir, yesterday, uh, because of the shortage of time, we could not uh, uh, take the questions, yeah. give two things. So, you want to uh, take it at the last, or? Uh, uh, I think I think if the guy who put this such a beautiful question, if he is here, hmm. so we could take up in the start. Now we can utilize the time, right? Okay. Uh, then, uh, can I ask the participant if that person is here? The one who put up, uh, I think there were two. One was regarding the, mod, uh, you know, district-wise, uh, village-wise yeah. model. And then another one asked about green commandos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the green commandos, uh, I would like to tell you, we do it uh, in our Sonapur Farm Learning Center, where we do a three days. There are uh, five level of green commandos. That is level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. Level one is the first entry point for the Green Commandos where we do it in our farm learning center. So there uh, 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 we advertise it through the Facebook or social media or even now we can do it through your organization uh, for, the, for the people interested there. And we, we were talking about if there are a few uh, like uh, a bunch of like 12 to 20 people from, the, from your area only, then we can have a make a special uh, batch of that. Uh, as we are self-sustaining uh, model, we charge 3,600 rupees for the level one training program for the three days, which includes their food, stay, training, everything. And after they become the Green Commando, they become our partners in the social enterprise, where we work together, they go to the community, we will identify strength of every Green Commando in their locality, and then we uh, through them, we organize the farmers, we organize the production, and then we bring it to the market, which we call the Farm Connect, the market rate extension. So uh, I welcome, um, I think most of the youths of Northeast, you can come and become a Green Commando. Uh, Green Commando is a social entrepreneur who will be doing good for themselves while serving the people at the grassroots. And we will look at what uh, we will look at uh, all the farming and allied uh, subjects, uh, right from veterinary to fishery to uh, all with the local breeds of animals and uh, fishes. And also, we will look at another very good aspect that is agro tourism. How we do this? So that's how the Green Commandos concept is. Uh, there, there are some uh, very good uh, YouTube videos made by some of my Green Commandos in the YouTube. So you can look at. Uh, 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 the whole concept will be clear when you look at 
a movie which was made called Revolution that is available in uh, the YouTube. You can just type Samir Bordlo in Revolution, then you get this video to know more about how we do the camping uh, about the Great Commandos. Yeah. Are you there, Dr. Akali? Yes, I'm there. I'm here. Okay. Uh, there is about the Green Commando. And the second question was yeah. about the Mar and which is like uh, your dream and even my mm. dream. And we are talking on that only market yes, led yes. market led uh, initiative mm. so there is something which i think uh, triggered in the mind of the kid very nicely that how we can be self sufficient how the things cannot come from outside first thing to make it self sufficient and uh, to make it local uh, we have to do a research of our consumer base how the guy uh, how uh, he suggests we have to know what is the uh, amount of consumption we need about the local food products we are talking about. We have to start with some very uh, regularly used commodities like the rice might be how we replace rice coming from outside with the local rice. So we can do uh, a survey of the local, might be the village, might be the town, might be the city, might be the district. We can do a survey where we see how much of rice is needed how much of herbs are needed, how much of whatever uh, product we think about is needed. Then we look at all uh, the uh, all the issues, how we uh, maintain the supply chain, how we involve more people, how we involve more uh, young people in the whole supply chain. I was talking about the transportation to that of delivery to the households or running a supermarket for the farmers. Yeah, it's, it's very... Uh, Good to see that uh, young people like uh, you are thinking about how we make a self-sustain and how we don't bring things from outside. For example, uh, Ereka nut consumption in uh, uh, Nagaland is very high. But uh, what I know now is all the Tamil, we call it Tamil, na, Ereka nut, they are all coming from Indonesia. So, uh, so the, we have to look at how we develop that. How we look at how how we uh, first make a research of the local people there, the community, and then on the base of the demand, on the base of every calculation of how much per. Initially, why I am talking about going with some very regularly needed items and which can be processed, like might be the gin, uh, might be the turmeric, might be the rice. Because perishable item, when we start the business, we also face this problem when we did it in Guwahati. Uh, what happens is sometimes uh, perishable items, the loss comes in because we cannot keep it. We, the person from the household ordered, but he is not there for next two days. So the vegetables will get spoiled. So rice, turmeric, those kind of things should be the start to make the sustain, uh, to make it sustain. And then we can come into the herbs later on when we no key, okay, we have a base of customers and we can give them. So that's how I think we can go ahead in that. And that's a very good approach which he is suggesting and we should do it. I think after the college opens and when I come to your college, we make a plan <coughs> and we can think about how we lead this uh, market-led extension and also market-led initiative. Yeah. Uh, Samir? Yeah. Uh, in this line, I just want to... Uh, one of your input is that yeah. uh, we're trying to do some kind of survey, but then we are not able to, you know, uh, actually get the uh, data, like secondary data. Mm. Um, it seems in other states, they have this uh, sector skill council, uh -huh. but uh, in Nagaland, I, well, I don't have any idea about this sector skill council ever existing. Mm. Uh, in Assam, do you have this sector skill council where we can get like, for example, we want to get information on, uh, especially with re related to marketing, uh, we need some information as to how much um, is our consumption, I mean, how much is required for con consumption of all the population, then how much is our production and how much is the deficit that we are importing yeah. from outside. Where do you think we can get those data? Yeah, uh, doctor, what I'll do is, I'm also not clear about whether Assam has got uh, the sector skill sector thing. Skill. So mm. I will just, I'll just look at that and I'll come back to you and we'll discuss about that. Okay, okay. Because uh, this is one important area that we're having, um, we need to, you know, put our plans together. So I'm just trying to figure out. But anyway, we can, now... We can, we can just formulate a, a survey uh, like former 
then we can uh -huh. start with a small colony in a micro level and look at how it works because we have to uh, increase the production base also before going bigger. Mm. So what we can do is at least we can take some villages of the students and we now uh, from yesterday's exercise, we will be coming to know what are the local things which are very much available in their community or in their localities. So mm -hmm. we can just think about, okay, Dimapur only, we take one colony and we look at, we do a survey and we take mm -hmm. out the demand of that colony and we relate some villages with that. So micro level we can practice, but other, uh, to go bigger, I will just inquire about this and I'll come back to you. Okay, thank you. I think uh, we will start with our uh, session and uh, yeah. today again, another very interesting uh, topic and then you are again with your uh, better half as well. So we look yeah. forward to the session. So all time all to you, Samir. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll put on the slides. Okay. Uh, today, uh, what I'm going to talk is one of my uh, favorite topic that is uh, nutrition to livelihood. So we will look at how we grow our own food at our home and also think about how the small, small nutrition gardens can be clubbed together and taken into something where we make sustainable livelihood for our people. See, when you, me, everybody in the Northeast, we are dealing with people who are actually happy when we compare to the other part of the country. If you look at the farmers of Bihar, UP, or the farmers of Nagaland, our farmers are very happy. Our, our, our happiness index is very high. So we have to look at how we make it uh, small. And I believe, in farming and uh, agribusiness, small is very beautiful. How we make it, like we don't, uh, we don't impose any work culture on them, but we take out uh, everything they have with love to culture, to the way they work, not change their work habit. So the best way is uh, growing our own food in a very small garden, which we call the homestead garden. And then after that, how we, make it also profitable. So that's what I'm going to talk today and, uh, uh, and, and we'll be looking at how we do it. I'll give you some techniques of doing it also. Okay, so uh, when we talk about a nutrition garden, actually we talk about immunity. First thing is immunity. Now post COVID and, and COVID has made us learn key we have to be very careful about our diet. Food, yesterday also I told you, food is the future medicine. It, it, is, it is healthy healing food, which is going to help us to be strong. So what, what we need is we have to depend on our local crops. So when I talk about the homestead garden, we are talking about building our local garden and we eat our local food and the surplus, it might be a very simple herb like I'm showing in the picture now. It is available everywhere. So this can be a herb which can be processed into dry powder or can be processed into a herbal tea or can be processed into a capsules. So those kind of processing which we can come up and we take it into the nutrition or we call it the nutraceutical crops which we have to work on. Immunity is something which is very important. So when I come to uh, nutrition and immunity and livelihood, I'll come there. I have my wife who is uh, uh, Dr. Premila and uh, she is uh, assistant professor in food science and nutrition in Assam Agricultural University. She is an uh, ex dietitian of Jorhat Medical College. She has been working uh, very much because lots of her clients have got Guinness records and many sports persons are there. So I'd love if she talks about uh, a few lines, I think five minutes, on how this local crops can be very benefit for uh, post COVID nutrition. Yeah. So, yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh... Uh, I'm very lucky to have See, we we um, the north is is uh, really we all know this is a hot spot for the, the herbs and the herbs uh, beyond the major food like uh, rice and, and uh, other food which are rich in vitamins which are rich in fat, protein, and carbohydrate. These herbs, they are specially known for their vitamins and mineral source. And uh, uh, sometimes what happens, so we really give less importance on this type of uh, herbs. 
because uh, hearts are like uh, in, in, in terms of tears, it is not that dusty also. And the children, especially the growing up children, they are really reluctant. And uh, we the uh, research, uh, from the research point of view, children, they hardly go for 30%, uh, 40% only children, they love eating herbs. So uh, in context with uh, COVID-19, the most endemic uh, pandemic is happening and the, what will be the consequence, we all know. So there will be lots, many uh, nutritionally deficiency diseases will be coming up in the population, among the population. And uh, this uh, herbs can be a one part of our, our integral balanced diet. So how can it be? And we all these herbs, they are rich in vitamins and minerals. And beyond these vitamins and minerals, some of the compounds we coin as a phytochemicals. And we also, in the other sense, we can say it as a nutraceuticals. So these, beyond the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals, they have different polyphenols, flavonoids, and so many other phenols which are really important for many diseases like cancer, like uh, heart diseases, kidney diseases. So because of this, these herbs are coined as uh, like a uh, uh, main core treatment of these diseases. And beyond that, these herbs, they have their main important role in the metabolism of carbohydrate, fat, and protein. So in that case, uh, these vitam vitamins, mineral sources, they will be supporting in different immunity in the immune system of the body, as well as they are the part of the enzyme, they are part of the hormones in the body. So lack of this disease, which will be very uh, like, a, a, a negligence, we have this negligence that these symptoms are very uh, minute and very hidden. And until and unless this is and, uh, entrap us, this type of uh, functions, we don't give any importance. So let's talk about the vitamins and minerals contained in the, contained in the green vegetables. So when we talk about vitamin C, vitamin C is being one of the most important nutrients which we'll be uh, using for the immunity boosting in our body. Vitamin C sources in the vegetables is like, we, we never thought of vitamin source, vegetable as a vitamin source. But vitamins are, uh, these greens are also important source of our vitamin C. So these vitamin C will, will be in the, will be coming with, uh, with other phytochemicals. When we consume this uh, local greens, local greens will be full of vitamins and minerals. Along with that, some of the phytochemicals, which are really helping in absorption and digestion, which is the main part. When we eat so many vitamins, but the main thing is how the availability of these vitamins in the body comes. So these phytochemicals, these polyphenols will help this vitamin absorb in the body. So this among the amount the, we have we have some particular amount per day consumption of this green leaf vegetable. Hardly we in consume uh, fit, sometimes we within a week two times in a in a week. Or, uh, or say one time, one, two times in, a, in, uh, in fortnight or four times in month. So uh, here in the, not just especially in your place, in uh, Nagaland and Majoram, even in Manipur, I have seen we, we uh, like uh, most of the time we consume this in the form of oil, but in the form of fried form. But here in other part of the country, the, this green consumption is very less comparatively. And we are lucky for that in the north, I think, so many local vegetables and uh, this, uh, these vegetables in, in other sense helping us in boosting this immunity. So for the post-COVID, post these greens will be playing an important role in boosting up, up the immune system of the body and uh, by supplying different vitamins and minerals and uh, uh, like uh, in other, other functionary physiological functions of the body. So, uh, Okay, uh, there is something about nutrition. I'll just give you some, uh, like our favorite master clip, Lai Patta. So I was going through her research and I found this. It is per 100 gram serving. Lai Patta has got an energy of 27 calorie uh, with carb of 4.67 grams, protein of 2.86 gram, total fat content is 0.42 gram, 
with cholesterol and all, all vitamins like C say niacin 0 0.80, 12 micrograms. So the master leaf is such a powerhouse of so much of vitamins and minerals which we talk about. So these are our future food. And here we have to look at how we make our we are talking about social agrippiness. We are talking about how we make into homestead garden and take nutrition into livelihood. First thing is we have to make our people eat good. And after that surplus of these products, we have to take it as a nutraceutical product to the market. That is what I'm going to talk today. Okay. So uh, another thing which uh, a homestead garden is important for is also to give us the pleasure. You know, it's, it's like when you go out and you have a beautiful garden, it's, it's like very relieving. So now what I say is now after uh, this whole technology is coming up, the concretization is happening, the development is happening, see Kohima, see Dimapur, all concretization, concretization, concretization. The kids are away from nature. So this homestead garden addresses another very, very prominent uh, challenge in the society now which I term as the nature deficit syndrome, where it comes into the reflection in the behavior. You find that kids are, kids are because they are deprived of human, we are also animals. So we have to be with the natural habit. We grow your own food can be something where you can connect your kids, connect your brothers and sisters connect you yourself to the nature and that can address the nature deficit syndrome i'm talking about okay now i talk about livelihood see this is uh, i'm putting a picture of my jorad farm where we have this small homestead garden model where this this we have made into some uh, bio-intensive raised beds which i will be talking to you and this whole bed is full of coriander and this bed is of three feet into 20 feet 60 square feet area here Every year we can sell out more than 20,000 rupees of coriander from this bed. Coriander is always high price in the market. We have got the local corianders. We have got this local, local, very high demanding mustard leaf. Mustard leaf economics is better than the cabbage. So this kind, we just can make our homestead garden into a first, we eat from that. And after that, we can also sell from them economics like this bed. 3 into 20, 60 square feet, can accommodate 50 numbers of king chili plants. 50 numbers of king chili plants. And 50 numbers of king chili plants in one season, if a king chili plant gives you at least 1 kg also. I take 1 kg, it will give more than 1 kg. If I take 1 kg also, that is 160 square feet bed is giving you 50 kg of king chili. You know the rates. Average 200 rupees. 50 kg into 200 is 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees from 60 square feet area. You can have 10 beds in your homestead garden. You don't have to have a job. So, so this is what way we grow our local food. That is the strength of our local food. If I bring a hybrid tomato here and I grow it, I'll not get that much of income. There will be all kind of inputs needed, all kind of fungicides needed, all kind of fertilizers needed. Everything will be needed. My cost is more. But here, orienders. I make raised bed, use my compost, I just spray, I give the seeds, it grows, and then after that I get money, I get food. So that is what I'm talking about nutrition to livelihood through our homestead garden. So when we eat healthy food, we save money. Uh, if, you, if you eat healthy, you don't need medicines, you don't need the doctors, your, your, your health cost is coming down. So we have to look at first, Every household, if you do a survey, you will find nowadays vegetables when we don't, when we have stopped growing them by ourselves or by our local farmers, when it comes from outside, when it comes to Dimapur from Sarupathar area or from the Karupitya or very chemical prone area of Assam, you will find the cost is also very high because transportation to every gate, they are paying money and everything perishable. So the loss also they will calculate and give you that. So the price gets increased. So when you stop that, every household is spending around average 150 to 200 rupees for their vegetables per day. So if you say 200 rupees per day also, if you grow your vegetables, you are saving 200 into 30, that is 6,000 rupees per month. That is a good saving for a farmer's family. That is income. Growing your own food 
is also income. We don't only look at ki, okay, if we have a paper with the Gandhiji stamp is only income. We have to look at, okay, if I grow my food, I don't buy, so that is also my income. If I don't buy my medicines, that is also income. If I am strong, I don't go to the doctor, that is also my income. So that is what we have to look at. Plus, now this kind of bits, you as an agripreneur, you can start at your home first, then you can make community enterprises. Like for example, you take 50 women in your village and you train them on how to make this homestead garden and you train them how to, how to uh, for example, grow coriander. So that village becomes a coriander village. So now they will be eating the coriander they need at home and the surplus, you will bring it together and bring it to a market. Like we were talking about, or the, or the your, your friend pointing out about like doing the market survey. So we do the survey of the Dimapur market, how much of coriander is needed. We go to the households and we, we say them, okay, okay, there is a story where 50 Nagaland women are growing their food, growing coriander in their homestead garden, and that is a coriander village. And that is laid by a young, Naga, agripreneur like you, that is a story. Everybody, but people, the consumer will buy from you. People buy for the cause. Yesterday also I told you that. So we can have that kind of market and we can have that kind of model where you don't need a government scheme, where you don't need a loan. You just have to, and the whole technology I'll be teaching you how to grow it. It's zero budget. We are just only reusing and recycling the resources. So we will grow it. We will involve our women groups. We will involve our children. We will involve the farmers and we'll make it into a community enterprise and eat healthy and take the surplus to the market. Another thing, when we talk about a homestead garden, it is also, uh, the, uh, it, it also comprises of the backyard poultry, that is country chicken. We can have backyard poultry of the country chicken. So this is something where the, family can have the chicken. We are all meat lovers. We don't have to go and buy a local chicken for 600 rupees. We have space in our home. We just can, we can, we can just make, uh, like this is in my farm, how we do this. We make them roam around there. We grow some herbs for them. They, they eat all the local herbs like the centelia. We grow it there. We put some cow dung there so that they are scavengers. They will, they will just find the insects and eat there. They give us eggs and they also give us meat. The same way, every homestead garden you create can have this backyard poultry with country chicken. People are healthy because they're having local eggs, surplus eggs, again, community enterprise. And you can be the agripreneur who supplies local eggs at 11 rupees per piece to the households in Dimapur city. And you pay seven to eight rupees to the farmers, which is a good price. In between, you get three to four rupees per egg. You can make it do a very big community enterprise in this. Meat can be another thing where you can go for local meat and you can grow. These chickens don't need money. If you go for broiler, you have to go for so much of technologies and high cost. I, 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 if you take broiler, I know you need a loan. But if you, for, 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 for growing the country chicken, you don't need any kind of loan or any kind of assistance. So we can have backyard poultry as a model incorporated to the homestead garden we are talking about. Backyard piggery local peaks and and just making the big pig styles very simple like all the resources we have this is we have in my farm i have 250 pigs but i have only 30 pigs in my farm but 200 pigs more than 200 pigs are with my model villages we have adopted every household in two villages 100 households and we have given them two pigs each male female male female we have given them they do it they they, they produce the piglets they sell us at 2,500 rupees and we sell to the other party at uh, 2,800 rupees. I don't have the fit, fit cost. I don't have the maintenance cost. I don't need labor to uh, have 250 big unit of pigs. So this is the social enterprise. With the homestead garden, you can incorporate in the model village, you can incorporate uh, this small, small pig styles where people can keep, because this is our culture. We, we, are, we are acquainted, the pig manual, when it is dry, we can use it as compost. And so uh, tomorrow when I deal with uh, soil uh, health, uh, then we will talk about how to make compost. So everything we can recycle and reuse, 
every state of our local people make it in very good community enterprise. Now we have to develop this model of homestead uh, garden through the ecological farming practices, where this is my model where we have three tires. There is uh, below, I have my bio-intensive raised beds, which I'll be talking today. Then in between, we have some basket farming, where we, uh, we have another middle layer of, uh, where we put bamboo sticks and we put a basket and we do container gardening and basket farming there. And above that, we have this bamboo mat, where we give the creepers. And most of our local crops, which are nutritious, God has given us crops which are seed loving crops. So you don't have, have to bother about whether the light will come or not. You can give a bottle gourd plant above and below the king chilies and everything, every herb we are talking about grows very nicely. Even the master leaf grows very good in seed. So this is a three time model where in a very small space. Uh, this is a 20 by 2400 square feet area in our farm, which we created a model. I'll give you the economics. Uh, with all the herbs which we need in our farm, even, even for, uh, for running the farm campings for the green commandos, we grow the local herbs and vegetables here. We eat from here. After that also, we planted 100 plants of one local variety of chili, which in Assamese it is called Krishna the black color chili, local chili. And from, from this, we have sold uh, uh, around per, per one season from this area, 400 square feet, we sold more than 15,000 rupees worth king chili, uh, that chili, the black chili, plus the bottle goods, plus the herbs we ate, yums, uh, yums, yum leaf, and everything which can be sold. And now also from this garden, we are supplying it to the nearby communities. Uh, by home delivery system where they are uh, buying vegetables from this. So this is what nutrition for eat properly and also you sell it. So this is the model uh, which we will be discussing more practically when I'm there in your college and we will create this model there. For gardening or for making a homestead garden, what is important is rainwater harvesting. Now we have lots of rain, but I'm talking about Nagaland and I know I worked in lots of hills. When in winter months, when it comes to the vegetable season, People cry for water. People have to buy 20 liters water even to wash clothes. So water is very precious. The first thing we have to create is a gel kun. Gel kun is nothing. Just dig a pit. For example, you dig a pit of four feet by uh, like four feet deep, four feet uh, wide or four feet length, whatever it might be a square. Then just buy a silpolin seed like the blue seed you are looking at here. Buy a silpolin seed. So when before just putting the silpolin seed. You just give a layer of dry leaves or thatch, one inch, uh, one inch to two inch layer of uh, thatch in the whole uh, pit in the base. And then you put the silpolin seed. And just you can put some logs or you can, you can cover with the, the buns at the side. You can cover it and the rains will come and rainwater will be stored there. Why I'm putting the straw is because if, if the polythene is in touch of the ground, so there will be that there will be sippies. We know osmosis, right? Uh, uh, higher level of concentration to lower level of concentration. The semi permeable membrane. We, if you remember your class eight, nine science book, then you can think about. We we learnt about that. So uh, this is one which is very important. You can make it four feet by four feet. You can make it two feet by two feet. Or you can put a drum in your homestead garden, keep it there, and harvest the rainwater because gardening needs water. And water is something which is very precious. Yesterday also we talked about keeping our own seeds. All these herbs and everything we are talking about, we can keep our own seeds. So for our garden, it's very important that we keep our own seeds. And how? And we make our own seedlings. Uh, we get uh, seed trays now. You can buy seed trays. And this seed trays, you can make compost. Just put the compost. Don't put any soil there. Don't put any uh, sand or soil or whatever you have read in the book. Just put, make compost and put the compost in the uh, seed trays and then put the seeds there. And after, after, after 25 to 30 days, you'll find your seedling has come up. Then you can transfer it to, uh, we get slips, black color slips, like one I'm holding here. You can make it out of uh, Ereka nut pollen leaves or some natural thing also you can think about how to make it. If you look at in that bamboo mat, you can see the seed trays and also the after they are becoming bigger, we transfer it to the sleeves. And after this, this you can sell also. This also uh, nursery of local nutraceutical crops is also an upcoming business. 
one king chili uh, like this i'm holding in my hand this sells at 25 rupees per piece in guwahati market in our farm connect store what is my cost nothing seed is mine compost is mine only that sleep sleep which is not even 50 pesos so from zero budget we can make it and we can also grow it in our so it's very important that we keep our own seeds and make our own seedlings develop our business on yesterday we talked about how we can make seed village now we can think about how we can make also seedling village and how we how we transfer the how we sell the planting materials it's it's learning from the ancestors like where every time you see in your in your grandpa's garden also he will like we eat also he keeps some plants for flowering that is seed keeping so now i have master live in my farm and i'll i'm also keeping some some plants to flower that is my seed keeping so so i keep my seeds from this i can keep my seeds from for the next uh, season so that is how we keep our own seeds right space utilization is something very important like every corner of your garden you can make it to a beautiful place where every co every corner can give you uh, give you food giving you food is also giving you money so it can earn money that is how we the social agreements have to work uh if you see my picture i have put uh, this is like a banana and with banana i am doing this is black rice of manipur and see the growth people think rice can be done only in paddy field but i think about the women who work so hard in the sun in the rice field so we can incorporate we can incorporate horticultural crops even in banana we can do intercropping even the rice fields we have the buns we can make the buns bigger we can think about how we do it banana and rice together this is rice and banana which we do together in one part of our uh, farm and if you look at the other part there is a uh, there is a small fishery with local fish like the eels we produce uh, that can be very good for the eel production and also you see the ajola the green part and lotus lotus is something which is beautiful seeds can be eaten ajola is a bio fertilizer it's a, it's an animal feed and also when you look at the banana plantation there below the banana plantation i have cooler i have grown cooler very nicely i brought some seeds from mukokchung area i i i i i grown cooler there and also we can plant uh, chilies and king chilies there they are seed loving things and so space utilization how much it might be a uh, i can i can make you profitable in 1 meter by 1 meter 1 square meter your kitchen can be sufficient small is beautiful and repeating you don't think hey, we need big land for farming just start a small model replicate in your farmers uh, field you have so many farmers to work with you make it bigger by a social enterprise replicate it in your farmers field and make it bigger don't try to accumulate big land and become a corporate farmer try to be a small farmer and this model you try to give it to the other people okay even the pathways like like from your gate to your home if there is a space so that that can be we can make bamboo mat and we can make an entrance like which i am showing in our farm or in our homestead garden which we have created there you see the creepers from cucumbers to bottle gourds to everything you come this season after when you farm you your head will be stuck to the bottle gourds you will have you can pluck cucumbers and eat this is something which i learned from thailand i went there and i saw every household in the villages when you go inside from their gate to their house they make like this and they utilize this they put the creepers there it looks beautiful it gives shade and 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 farm tourism yesterday your madam was talking about now the tourism has changed so people will love to come to your villages you have created and spend time there when you create this kind of beautiful thing you see i'm giving training training is earning again that is service i don't allow those people to come free to my farm they pay entry fees they pay us for giving them the training so that service can be added when you create this your farm or your model farms in your uh, in your village which you have ad adopted so this this can be a very, very beautiful thing which you can do in your home when you plant the garden and now we are talking about some technical things how to make the uh, small nutrition garden we are talking about every time we plant the garden we have to look at the which side or how we make the beds so every time we do the beds in the north south direction 
so this is just don't go with my drawings i'm very bad with computer so uh, it's just an illustration which i'm giving so every time the baits we have to place towards north south direction right so it has to be north south direction so that there is uniform distribution of the sunlight so uh, this is a model which i have created there should be a beautiful pathway i i i have put a gel kun there in the border you can put some trees like the lemon trees which has got thorns it might be a orange it might be a lemon tree it might be a local fruit which has got thorns that can be a life fence because you'll have lots of wild boars coming in our place we have elephants coming wild elephants coming in some places so animals will also not come when there are thorns and that is a very good income lemons are very good income so that can be a life fence which gives you uh, more products and the baits uh, these are all uh, zero tillage raised beds and then we have to have a composting site where we make compost and vermicompost which we will talk in tomorrow's class when we talk about waste to well okay this is this is just an illustration you can have your own way so when you are at home you just go go uh, what you do in your uh, homestead or if you have a rooftop and just make a drawing and plan okay well, what is my dream garden so you go home and you if you are at home now just just make your dream garden make it in a paper and and come to the college when we are there together uh, when we will have the uh, sessions together we will look at that and plan together so so just visualize and make your dream garden bio intensive beds are important when we uh, do farming and homestead garden mainly because we are utilizing the same space so we have to build the microbial population of the uh, soil so bio intensive means uh, culturing the microbes it's keeping more microbes so uh, we we why why it's important is so more tiny microorganisms will grow so that this microorganisms you know 78% nitrogen is there in the atmosphere right and that's nitrogen we have studied in class 7 science book when we were making the nitrogen cycle that nitrogen will be fixed for the plants by a bacteria which is called yeah you, you i think i don't have to tell you that because we all know that rhizobium and those kind of bacteria they 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 fixes uh, the nitrogen for the plants so when we uh, when we make this bio intensive beds we culture more microbes so that we use the atmospheric nitrogen this microbes will break down all the other uh, nutrients like the phosphorus uh, potassium calcium magnesium whatever we have in the soil they they are they are locked so with their action they will release it for the plant plant also has got a synergistic effect because plant will cook food in the leaf and out of that starch they produce from the root they will excrete something out because they know that starch will be the food of the microbes which will in turn give them the nutrients again from which are uh, bound in the soil so this is how we create the raised bed to uh, create more microbes when uh, there are lots of stress conditions which comes like the dry spell or the rains too much of rains so when we make raised beds and the microbes are there then what happens is uh, we will have strong plants so when we have strong plants so it will be uh, more healthy and it can uh, it can uh, go through the stress condition also and we will have another thing very important is it conserves lots of moisture so moisture conservation is very important it holds the water water holding capacity of the soil will form more humic acid there so the compost and the black layer will be more so we will uh, the water holding capacity of the soil will be more so we will make this bio intensive beds so today i am teaching you how to make a zero tillage raised bed we are not using even a spade okay so how we do it first we will select an area in your garden which is 3 feet wide and 6 feet long first just remove the grasses of that area you don't have to remove all the grasses or clear the weeds i for me there are no weeds i think every every plant has got their role in the uh, whole biosphere so just remove the weeds which we have in that area 3 feet by 6 feet 6 feet long and 3 feet wide now make a bamboo frame about 8 to 10 inches you have to put three or four bamboos together to make it the, the boundary you make a boundary by putting bamboo one above the other and you can put some bamboo nails and make it like a cage so that is 
making a raised bed. Okay, so so this area, three feet by six feet, we can make like that. Now what you do is pile up, collect dry leaves. Every time we collect the dry leaves and we burn it, but for me they are like gold. So uh, pile up three inches of uh, dry leaves in that frame, and then water it and try to compact it, press it and compact it and make it a three inch layer of dry leaves. Above that three inch layer of dry leaves, now you put two inches layer of compost. How to make compost? We'll be dealing tomorrow. Dry animal manure. If you don't have compost, you can use dry animal manure. Dry pig manure can be also used. Okay, cow manure is good. Dry pig manure can also be used. You can use that. You bring some topsoil from the jungle. Go to the jungle and go under a tree and just scratch up the black humus, or uh, black soil, and bring it and pile it up two inches layer above the three inches layer of the dry leaves. Now what you do is. Again, you repeat two inches layer of dry leaves above that layer. First layer is the dry leaves strains, water it, compact it. Then two inches of compost or dry animal manure or topsoil from the jungle. Then you again water it. Third layer is repeat two inches layer of dry leaves again, water it, compact it. Above that, now you put two inches layer of again compost or dry animal manure or soil from the jungle. Now your bed is ready. Apply one kg vermicompost. How to make it? We will we will deal tomorrow. At home only you can make it very nicely. Put one kg of vermicompost, 200 gram of bamboo biochar. Bamboo biochar is nothing but charcoal. We will deal it tomorrow. I'll teach you how to make it at home very nicely and very simply. So we can do it like that. 200 gram of wood ash. Whatever wood you burn, the S, you use 200 gram of wood ash. Keep this for one day. Then next day you plant or sow your crops. Mustard leaf any local crops, chili crops, whatever you want to plant, which is local, you plant it. This is a very simple way where you don't use, you don't have to plow because as a farmer, I believe soil belongs to my future generation. It is not mine. I don't have the right to till it every day, plow it every day and destroy the microbes. So I have to culture my microbes. So I will grow, go above the ground, raise it, make raised bed and culture more microorganisms so that when my kids start doing in my land, already the original land is very fertile. Only because of the death of the soil in Punjab and Maharashtra and big states, we hear the cases of farmer suicide. We don't want this in our northeast. So we have to go to zero tillage farming. So today's lesson is simple. You just go through this. I think uh, this slide can be given to you or you can click pictures out of this. And you keep it and you can call me also when you make it. Uh, I'll give you my number. So this is a simple thing. If you have any questions, you can ask me over the question and answer uh, box, right? At the end, your bamboo bed, uh, if you put like, uh, if you put like, uh, uh, like round bamboos, then it will be like the other one. Or if you, if you make the bamboo into like broken things, so it becomes like this, which can be full of green. So this is an eight inch high uh, bio-intensive raised bed with full of grains, which you can make it your home in a very small space, right? Okay. And now there are lots of, uh, yesterday also we were talking about the urban gardeners. Lots of you are staying in town. So what, what how you can make your raised beds? You can make your rooftop gardens. You can make uh, small uh, gardens in the place where you have at your home or your home state. This is my work in this lockdown. I created this uh, lockdown uh, rooftop garden in my home. And if you look at the wooden box, that is an unused uh, drawer of an unused table. So now this drawer is full of nutrition. You see the amaranth, you see the coriander, you see a tomato plant, everything. Other one is my unused tire in my garage. So, so you just have to put, uh, when you make this, you just take a container, Whatever you find in your home might be a broken plastic uh, bucket or might be a tire or something. If it is a tire, you have to put uh, plastic in uh, below and then you fill it up with uh, compost, mostly compost or dry cow dung manure or topsoil like we did the other bed, uh, wood, wood ash and also biochar which you'll learn tomorrow and you can sow your seeds there also. So uh, where there is a will, there is a way. So even small, small are more beautiful. Even those people who don't have land, you don't get this out in, you can, you can start your garden, even in your mud tub or a plastic bucket or something, but do it. Everybody has to do it. Everybody has to grow. It's very fun. 
and you love when you harvest your today morning i harvested my emerald i put a facebook post also if you look at my facebook and my my kids will be kids already had that boil emerald soup so that is immunity that is what madam was talking about so we can grow our own food and eating our own food is a delight right it's 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 gratification it's it's like i'm so happy okay i'm harvesting my food so it's very uh, we are attached to that and that is nutrition those who don't have space can also reuse and recycle like this is one of my green commandos whose land was very low lying and she could not do farming in the uh, land because it is flooded and everything is there so what she did is she reused the plastic cement bags and and the thermocol box to grow king chilies now she is doing it with compost and the same the other ways are all same so you can have your own garden right this is one very important crop which i am showing you yesterday only i had a visitor who is asking me okay if you can give this we are going to buy it for uh, this is a local herb which is very nutritious for cancer patients to anemic patients for high uh, high iron content to everything uh, the stems are very tasty it has got a flavor also but most importantly when i talk about nutrition to livelihood we must make our farmers grow this crop you have lots in your mountains lots of people who are from outside they go inside nagaland and they they buy in very like they don't buy also they pick it up making friends with the uh, villagers they pick it up bring as lorries and they sell it in high price these are like raw they sell it around uh, 20 30 rupees and if it is dried they sell it around 200 rupees a kg and from this root they extract the oil which is used in the perfume industry which is very costly so this is what nutrition to livelihood so let us make our farmers grow this for nutrition slowly we will take them to the other benefits from medicinal to aromatic to everything we have with our crops and we take it to the livelihood uh thank you very much uh, that is what i wanted to say but we have some activities because this is an activity based learning uh, whole session we are doing so what what i wanted uh, all of us to practice is i'm also doing with you i'll also post my pictures of doing this it's not only giving you assignment so it's like uh, we will make two zero tillers raised beds at our home for those who have land size might be 3 ft by 6 ft size might be 3 ft by 3 ft whatever land size is or might be 3 ft by 20 ft also that is how you how you do it and uh, we will do uh, for those who don't have don't have uh, spaces or land they will go for three innovative container gardening raised beds whatever innovations comes to their head it might be whatever they find they can innovate and they can make it might be the tire which i did it might be a dryer or it might be a plastic bucket it might be a tub it might whatever so uh, that can be uh, done by the people who don't have land so you make three innovative container gardening raised beds two zero tillers beds for those who have land click pictures of every step in making your own small garden and and we will share it and then share the importance of growing own food among your family members and your community whatever we are talking share it to your family members and also share it to the community grow your own food and uh, stay healthy for any doubt call me at 9101582344 or text me but i am giving a time 10 am to 4 pm and uh, you can mail me at spreadany at gmail dot com. I have already I have seen lots of you have sent me friend requests, but I have already five thousand people in my friend list. So please follow me so that we can uh, be in connect on Facebook and on my Facebook you will find lots of this kind of models which you can uh, for your innovation and also which you can try and and we can be in connect also. You can get some techniques. Subscribe my YouTube channel called Grow Your Own Food with Farmer Sami so you will get uh, those techniques how you make that. some videos are there so you do this so thank you very much i am open for your questions okay and ma'am is also there with me so you can also answer it nutrition yeah thank you samir uh, there are three in the question box if you could uh, um, just have a look or should i read it out for you or are no. you able to see yeah i'll i'll see that okay yeah yeah so this is one question which is like so which vegetables will be the best for a student wanting to start up their own vegetable garden okay i think this season if you talk about uh, we were talking about local vegetables and i told you yesterday you you just explore your locality 
and look at what are the things which are growing now, uh, uh, which, which, which are growing now. And then uh, uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, uh, identify some crops which you like. For example, now I think the uh, creepers are very good. Uh, somebody based in Mokokchum can grow the cucumber. They are so lovely. Right? And then he can think about how to keep the seeds also. So might be might be when you grow it in your uh, raised bed, if it is not the season also, you can grow for master leaf because I am growing master leaf in this off season and it's growing in the raised bed and in the seed. So the selection of vegetable depends on your locality and you look at which you like. But yeah, now the creepers will grow much better, like the bitter goats, like the squasses, or the cucumbers, bottle goats, ridge goats, those kind of crops will grow now good. Okay. Another question is, uh, our village grow a very good quantity of quality of yam. Can you please suggest the steps necessary? Well, what should I do in order to make it into the market? Okay. See, yam al always has a good price than the potatoes. So, so it's uh, so you have to just uh, do an analysis of the nearby town or the market, and you, being the middleman, you can be the connect. You send me the pictures of the yam. I'll also help you how to link to the market. If if the yam is like what I I have shown you today, it has got very uh, good market potentiality, which we can link up also. Plus, uh, I think local market is also good. Uh, Thirty to forty rupees per kg is yam, and even the yam leaf can be sold. So there you can explore and morning we were talking about uh, see market is something where you have to explore the local market and you have to do a research and then based market is rather than giving to a middleman who is on, an outsider i believe just connect directly to the uh, consumers like our farm connect program start your farm connect program of your college where you connect your consumers in in your town to the farmers directly and give them good money Right? That is another way to do this. Uh, last nutritious plant which I sowed. Okay, that is uh, uh, in Hindi, it is called uh, something called uh, Sugandha Matri or something. And it's a yam family. Even I, I know it as a yam. Where, where in our local language, it is called Gundkosu or, or it, it is called, wait, wait, wait. I have this name. It's called Gonchana. It's called Gonchana. It's a uh, English name is Fragrant Swamp Mellow. English name is Fragrant Swamp Mellow, and uh, Hindi it is called Sugandha Mantri. Okay, the scientific name is Homa Lomena Aromatica. Okay, that is that is the plant which uh, I showed you last, and it has got big potential. It grows in the well after three years. The oil content tuber develops, so the harvest is after three years. So after two, three years, we take it for nutrition for the stem and the leaf, and after that, we can take it for livelihood through this uh, connection for the perfume industry. Yeah, I think these are the questions. Uh, more questions are there? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Samir, to add to uh, Samir's uh, th uh, answers and also to the audience, I just want to, to the participant, my students, I want to say that if there is anyone in Dimapur who's interested in, you know, really taking up the vegetable, uh, I have like uh, the vegetable packets uh, right now ready and I can give some of those packets at some delivery point and uh, I would like to see them grow. So if there's anyone interested, they can uh, connect me, connect to me. I have very good vegetable seeds from, uh, from the Institute. And uh, another thing is that regarding the yam, uh, even NOK, uh, our Nagaland Organic Connect is trying to market some of the farmers produce. So if, I don't know how far is the place that you're talking about, but I believe it must be somewhere to Sangmon. I don't know because yam, yam is very famous there. So if you have, uh, enough quantity of yam and you would like to send it here, then uh, our Nagaland Organic Connect team is trying to market some of the farmers produce. So you can connect to me and uh, we will try to help you because yam has very good demand here uh, in Dimapur as well, as Samir has pointed out, even for local markets. Yeah. So I think... Um, uh, I think, I think uh, Dr. Akali, there is another interesting question. It's okay. about the zero tillage raised beds. And uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to fill up the raised beds uh, until one season. After you harvest the crop, then again, you can put some compost in. In between, yeah, you can put some uh, vermicompost or biochar, 
and you give it. You don't have to just uh, raise the bid again uh, because uh, we are giving it, we need around six inches of uh, raised bid, but we are putting eight inches. So two inches will go down, six inches sufficient for the crops we are growing. So you don't, in between the uh, growth period, you don't have to fill up again the raised bed. But yeah, we can, time to time, we can apply some vermicompost if we make at home so that there's more nutrients in the bed. Yeah. Thank you. There's other questions as well, Samir. Okay, other questions are coming. Okay, okay. Yeah, two more. Yeah, two more. Uh, Pankasa, what type of processed products can be prepared for, a, for large cardamom? It's found abundantly in parts of Arunachal and also Nagaland. What are the prospects for its commercial and easily? Okay, Pankas, uh, I think large cardamom uh, market is like mostly, uh, if you know about the North Indian halwais, they take it for the sweet industry. So uh, I think uh, now this, uh, uh, you can think about, when you talk about processing, I think the, you can just uh, separate the, separate the uh, granules inside and make it into small ready ready to apply because sweet they don't want to remove the skin and put it so removing the skin you can make into direct uh, products only the granules and uh, and other processing units even i am not so sure about I'll, I'll i'll study more and i'll come back to you but this is a good question because uh, there is very less market now to sell it i again point out i did it in the first day of my webinar when we were all together see large cardamom doing in a large uh, way is also a mistake because it has got some viral disease which it takes and the market is very small so uh, your thought is good that we if we can do it more processing one processing i look at is separating the granules and making it into packets so that the halwa is get it to ready to use packet and uh, other things i'll more explore and come back to you and another question is uh, so raised bed explanation really fascinated me yet what i see mostly is we fellow in situ raising or bed. So is there any difference of raising bed from somewhere else soil or doing it from the existing area? Okay, uh, why I am bringing soil from the jungle and from uh, below a plant is because of the microbe. One spoon of this jungle soil consists about more than 7 million of uh, beneficial bacteria. So when we mix compost and we bring some soil from the jungle, so we bring in the uh, we bring more uh, uh, microorganisms. So making raised bed is culturing the microorganisms. So, so it's, you, you, can, you don't have to go very far. But if your land is uh, nearby your land, there is a tree, then you can bring the top shelf from uh, below the tree or near a jungle, you can bring it from there also. And if, you, if your uh, land is fellow and it has not been used for a long time, then you can just scrap the top soil uh, from there also and you can put it there. Yeah, adding compost is important. Making compost is very important and we will deal it with uh, compost making tomorrow. So tomorrow class is something important how we know how we make the filler material of the compost. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of questions and uh, I'm sure the students are opening up to you, Samir. And yeah, uh, I think it's nice. a... It's a very good platform because sometimes the students are a bit hesitant when they see you face to face, yeah. but uh, their faces are not shown so they're able to interact with you, I guess. So I think it's also another good form of uh, online class. Um, yeah. To my students, I'd like to say that, I mean, the, your today's um, uh, lecture was like, it's so much of an eye opening, like, you know, that we talk about income when we get only money, money, you know, people think that only money is the income, but you have said it very uh, precisely that growing our own food and not buying medicine or going to doctor. I think these are the, you know, the income, the source of income, and I think which our students have been able to uh, get clarity on this and this during this COVID we realized that maintaining our health, maintaining our immunity system, I think is, is the only thing that can prevent us from getting uh, uh, this virus. So I think this is a very good thing that we can start on our own. And whatever some, uh, to my students, I want to say whatever uh, Samir has given an assignment yesterday and today, I hope that you're doing it religiously because this is for your own good. This is for your future. And I hope that you will get all this thing done before you come to um, for the you know August session with him. Practically, that time we'll have face-to-face -face session. But as of now, uh, I hope that you will do all this religiously. Thank you so much, Samir, for giving your time and uh, for more interaction. Okay.
Yeah, I, I think we want to thank your uh, missus yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So much th uh, thanks to Madam. Yeah, Madam, thank you so much. Yeah, and if you have any closing uh, remark to my students, you can kindly say it before we close down. Uh, before I, I just want to uh, mention one more important thing is that I mean, green uh, consumption of grains, uh, these days especially, whatever available during this season, we can have in different form, in, in the form of soup, in the form of uh, puree, wherever feasible, in, in what form they want, they must have at least two eyes in a day, two eyes in a day. Because as I said, greens will be the only uh, sources of these vitamins, minerals, which will be boosting our immune system. And uh, one more thing I just wanted to uh, mention to my children is that the, uh, there are lots, many informations in the, in the website, in the uh, WhatsApp, whatever we from the information we get. There they mentioned that the vitamin C tablets and the other sources of immune uh, boosting elements like selenium, vitamin D, A, so many uh, like vitamin uh, immune boosting nutrients are there. But I must suggest my children that instead of taking this elemental uh, with tablets in the form of tablets, we, we better consume in the raw, raw or fresh or whatever available greens around us in, in, in our day-to-day -day life. So, the, so uh, because these uh, raw sources, they will give more of uh, vitamins in the active form as well as along with the food vitamins, they will give more other nutraceutical items. So instead of taking tablets or synthetic drugs or whatever supplements we are getting in the market, instead of that, we should teach our children to have this role in different forms, whatever they like, so that that will be more beneficial for us. So uh, let's stop eating uh, other supplements available in the market. Instead, we, uh, we will consume our whatever vegetables available these days in our home, in our kitchen. Thank you so much to be a part of your session today. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks thank a you. lot. Yeah, Samir, you. you want to have some last word before we uh, press for today? See, uh, stay, stay healthy, grow your own food. Everybody is uh, conscious about our health. Grow rosella in your uh, home. Take it. Take two cup of rosella tea every day. And for all the young guys, you, you, all your uh, complexion to keeping slim and everything will be very nice with your local thing. Stay healthy, stay fit, and also grow your own food. All the assignments I'm giving is only a practice. So please do it and enjoy it. Don't take it as an as a, a assignment. Enjoy it. And when we, when we are there together creating a food forest, we'll have fun in farming. Thank you very much. Thank you for the uh, very patient listening. Thank you so much, Samir, and thank you, uh, Madam, and thanks a lot to all the participants. See you tomorrow again at the same yeah, time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Good day. Bye.